Hi, you're watching Keystone Science, and today we're going to teach you how to build your very own taser glove. Alright, so one of the glories of this project is that all the parts you're going to find can be easily found in one of those old TVs, the old CRT TVs, those are the old uh, thick ones basically, these have a vacuum tube. You're going to want to be careful when you're taking those apart. I'll make a video how to safely do that without shocking yourself. Not it, The charge sword up in them will not be enough to kill you, but it will hurt if you don't ground it first, and I'll show you guys how to do that in a future video. But anyways, so here, you're going to have a positive and a negative. Now, as I said, those are going to be anywhere from about 12 to 36 volts DC up to about, uh, I'd say 7 amps would be beginning to push it. Uh, you can go higher if you want, but that's just about what I would put it at. And the great thing about this is that since it is DC, you can power off this high voltage power supply off of batteries to make it a portable thing. Now, from the positive end over here, it will go over and you're going to have a resistor here, a resistor here, and by the way, I'll be writing down the values of these after I draw out the circuit for you. Over here, over here, this wire is going to come up and it's going to jump across this one, so they're not connected. Where they're connected, I will put a big dot so you guys know, but that is not connected to that wire. I'm just drawing that to symbolize that is over there. I'm going to draw it over here, so I'll go over to this side. And I'm going to wind a coil around over here, about four turns of this wire on a flyback transformer. The two pins, which will be, this one actually doesn't have them, but they're going to be your primary pins, which I can show you guys how to do. You, it's just basically a resistance test. The one that's closest to one ohms or the highest is going to be the primary coil. And by the way, that primary coil is going to be right here. If this guy, you're winding yourself. This guy is already inside of the flyback transformer. He's already in there. He's going to be two of these pins here that are connected, which you can do through the diode test or resistance test on any regular multimeter. Down here, so that's going to be, this is looping back around just for sake of drawing it. That's how I'm drawing it. And again, that's jumping over the wire. All right. It's not connected to it. Now, over here, it's going to a thing called a MOSFET. Now, there are many different ways people draw MOSFETs. Um, some people draw them as the regular transistors, which I think is what I'll do here. I'll just draw it as a regular transistor symbol, not to confuse anyone. All right, so over here is going to be called your base. Here is called your collector, and this is called your emitter. So this guy is called a transistor. Notice how he has three pins. One of them is going to be the base, one of them is going to be the collector, one of them is going to be the emitter. A good way to tell what the pins are is either um, by doing Google a transistor test, and you can figure it out that way, or you can just Google the number that'll be on it. So for this guy, if you look here, it has a spec number. Let me show you my favorite type of transistors. These guys I ordered a while, little while ago. They are called IRFP 250s. And basically, I like them because they can handle a whole lot of amperage and quite a bit of voltage too. So you can use them very well in multiple projects. But the transistor, you'll find it inside of a TV mounted on a big heat sink. It'll look like this, right? And you're going to want to desolder that. So this is our transistor. Normally when you put out a transistor inside of a circuit diagram, you're going to want to circle it as such. Uh, that's a pretty terribly drawn circle, but it's just common practice and something that people do. So down here, now these wires are connected. I guess I should be drawing dots to show you guys that they are. Down here, that is going to be connected back to the negative or ground, whatever you want to call it. Now over here, this line represents the iron ferrite core of the flyback transformer. This guy is going to be our high voltage, and that's going to be connected to a coil that I will show you here. It'll be drawn like this. Now, I'm drawing a bunch of squiggly lines because it's going to have lots of turns in order to get the voltage stepped up. So over here, that'll be where your arc is of the high voltage. Now, this line here represents the ferrite core. If it's a double line, it represents, represents an iron core. So that's going to represent the ferrite core that goes into there and around through here. All right, so now time for some values. Really, the only values you're going to have to be dealing with is this guy here, which is going to be 200 
240 ohms, and this guy down here, which is going to be 27 ohms. The higher wattage of resistors you can get here, the better, but I wouldn't be too stressed about it. Basically, if it's the ones that you find in your TV will be big enough for this. The great thing about resistors to keep in mind is that if you have multiple resistors, say you can't find a 240 on one, but you can find an 100 one and a 130 one. Well, R1 plus R2 is going to equal to R3, so 100 plus 130 is going to equal 230 ohms. Now, for this circuit, it doesn't have to be the exact ohmage that we see here, the exact resistance. This will work just fine. It doesn't need to be exactly 240. As close as you can get it is the optimal resistance. In parallel, it's going to be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And by the way, you could keep on going, keep on adding them on. All to the negative 1 equals the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Um, that's if you're doing parallel. So, pair parallel and series. Alright, so that is the circuit for it. It's a very simple circuit and in my opinion it's a very great circuit for people who are just starting out with electricity, especially if you want to build something high voltage to show your friends. We're going to be calling a simple fly back driver. I'm sorry, that's oh, there goes an ink. If you're just starting off, I would just recommend getting the transistor out from the TV. So, a little thing that looks like this. It's gonna have three pins. And it's gonna have some writing here. And that writing is going to be how you're going to find the base collector and emitter. You're going to Google that number you see on the transistor. And from that, you'll find the data sheet of the transistor, and you'll be able to tell which one's the base, which is the collector, and which is the emitter. If you guys can help with that, just let me know in the comments what kind of transistor you're dealing with. Maybe send me a picture of it, um, or send me just the number on it, and I'll look it up and I'll help you guys find it out. So anyways, now that we have the circuit to it, let's build it out so you guys can see exactly what we're doing here. Alright, so let's build out the circuit here. So I already have it built, so I'm going to line it up with the paper so you can see what I'm talking about. So here, as you can see, I have the MOSFET. And the MOSFET I have here is not the IRFP250, um, just because simply at first when I did it, I didn't have these yet. Um, so this is just one I pulled out of the TV. You're going to want to mount it onto a heat sink just by putting a screw through the hole there. Um, you're going to want to put some sort of thermal gel in between it. For me, I think I just used like mint toothpaste, to be honest. Or um, for this one, I may even use the stuff that was already on it and not worried too much about it. But uh, it will get pretty warm. So you're going to definitely want it on the heatsink. So, that is where that is going to go. Now let's pull the rest of it into view. Uh, by the way, it's all just heading over here. Uh, this bottle right now just has the switch on it there. So you can see the two wires going to it. Because between the points over here, it's nice to have a switch. Right here, you can add a switch. Also, what may be recommended here is to add a good old-fashioned diode, just to make sure that you're not um, going to be putting it in reverse. So here you can see the flyback transformer that I winded some wire around, and there's the ferrite core. Um, so this is going to be that coil right there is going to be the one you wind. All right, and down here you can see on the bottom that there are a few wires. This white one is the high voltage negative. And over here, these... Alright guys, and that is simply the circuit. It's a very, very simple circuit. Now, if you need help trying to figure out which pins are the primary, um, and you don't have a resist uh, multimeter or anything like that, I would say that it's a pretty safe bet to say that the first two pins are going to be the primary. And the way to figure out what is what the high voltage negative is, is that when you connect up the circuit, you're going to get the positive, and you're going to bring it down here with all the other pins, and see which one it arcs to the best. Don't get it near the primary pins, because you don't want it to affect the uh, big picture here, the big circuit. You don't want it to blow out that MOSFET or anything. But just do that to see which one it arcs to. Now, some more troubleshooting things. 
when you build the circuit, if it does not seem to work, there's going to be two main things that I would say it is. One, you're not using the correct primary coil that's already inside the flyback transformer. Maybe you identified it wrong, and that would cause it to not be as strong as it could be. The next thing I would say is this guy up here, your winding that you did personally on the iron core, is not in the correct direction. So, you're going to want to flip your connections there, so you're going to have the two wires here. You're going to want, so pretend these are the end of the coil over here, you're just going to want to basically connect them up backwards from what you already had and see if that gives you something better. Because the thing about the circuits is that when you have a coil such as that, the ones on the inside are going to be wanting to be rotating around the same area, the same way, so it's not fighting against itself and diminishing the output from that way. And the final thing I would say, if it's not working, is that you either built the circuit wrong, or your MOSFET is actually broken. Um, there's a good way to tell that. The way that I would normally do is that I connect up a power source over here to the base, and then from the base, I run it down over here, and where the emitter is, I put a light or something like that, just so I can see if current is flowing through it. Now, what you're, want, what you're wanting to do from that is that normally I'll put the main power supply over here on the collector, and I'll put like a 9-volt battery here on the base, so that whenever I connect the 9-volt battery, it should turn on the light bulb from the main power supply up here, because it allows the current to flow through the MOSFET. And that's a good way to tell if your MOSFET is bad or not, and that's the way I personally like to do it. Alright, so I'm going to give you guys a moment to pause the video if you're still working on the circuit. If not, Come right ahead and watch the next part. So, the next part is going to be dealing with this. This, I used an old Kool-Aid container or lemonade container. I'm not sure exactly which one of the two it was. Um, just to house all the electronics. And then I wrapped it in electrical tape. And between the positive power supply and the regular circuit, I put in this toggle switch here. Now it's disconnected, so it won't be turning on when I'm doing this. So that I can easily flip it between on and off. Now, I meant to over here, if I was going to have it stay a 9 volt battery, which works pretty well. I mean, it gives you a decent power output. It's not the strongest, but if you're not aiming to kill somebody, you know, it's going to taste them quite well. So, I'm using just a 9 volt battery here, and I have these alligator clips to connect to the terminals. Um, I marked mine as yellow over here for positive, and brown for negative, so that I can easily differentiate between them. And then up here, as you can see, I have the positive and the negative terminals coming out here. I have some extra wire round, wound around in case I need to extend my reach. And the gloves are going to be the most important part for keeping you safe. I'm using old gardening gloves, as you can see here. And I got lead, actually. Um, I believe these are actually shotgun slugs that I shot at a Kevlar vest. For the gloves, you're going to want to put the hot glue. And you're going to want to make sure you have a little bit more insulated if you're going to be testing it like this. Let's go ahead and test them out here. On. to see more of these kind of videos go ahead and hit the subscribe button below and we'll be sure to be posting them weekly please also comment below what you'd like to see next be safe and have fun